Alright guys, it is a cold, dreary winter day here. In late October at Bugs in a Jar Farm, it is now Saturday, October 24th, 2020, and we're going to be having a little bit of a miniature Doomer meetup. So I got some fellow Doomers on the way, so if they show up during this video, uh, I'll have to cut it off short. Uh, oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. This is Sancho Panza, my little sidekick, and uh, doing what we do every day, and that's try to chronicle the collapse of everything, namely a planet, and I was it Alert Tribes member Bill G who sent me this? I, I get so much stuff. I do appreciate all the doom and gloom. Uh, now, I know I remember reading this, and I could swear I already covered this. <coughs> Who knows? Maybe it was somewhere else in the Doomosphere. This came out in this excellent website, Resilience, although I guess it was originally published in Voice of Action on June the 8th. That's the day I was leaving Austin, Texas, so uh, I had to take some time off. So maybe I just read it, but better, better late than never. And if I have already had this video, I guess it bears repeating. So let's get right to it before I get interrupted. Uh, and this is from the resilience.org resilience uh, website, which I have read from before. Take it away. Collapse of civilization is the most likely outcome. That was a quote. Say top climate scientist. And we're going uh, to go down uh, to Australia to talk to Will Steffen and the folks. <clears throat> Australia's top climate scientists say, quote, we are already deep into the trajectory towards collapse, close quote, of civilization, which may now be inevitable because nine, this was back in June, of course, as of June, nine of the 15 global climate tipping points that regulate the state of the planet have been activated. I don't know if activated is the same as crossed or not. <clears throat> Australian National University Emeritus Professor Will Steffen said that there was already a chance we have triggered a quote global tipping cascade that would take us to a less habitable hothouse earth climate regardless of whether we reduce emissions. Whether we do or not, I guess. I was, uh, I had Will Steffen on my list of people that I wanted to interview back when I did interviews and maybe I'll crank those up again at some time and we really have to get Will on the show, but until that happens, uh, let's hear what, uh, what's on the mind of Will Steffen. Steffen says it would take 30 years at best, more likely 40 to 60 years to transition to net zero emissions, but when it comes to tipping points such as Arctic sea ice, we could have already run out of time. Evidence shows we will also lose control of the tipping points for the Amazon rainforest, the West Antarctic ice sheet, and the Greenland ice sheet in much less time than it is going to take us to get to net zero emissions, uh, Stefan says. Okay, so this is just a long tear. Uh, from this interview with Will Steffen, in, uh, originally in the Voice of Action. Is that somebody showing up or not? He's just looking at a squirrely. Quote, 
quoting Will, quote, given the momentum in both the earth and human systems and the growing difference between the reaction time needed to steer humanity towards a more sustainable future and the intervention time left to avert a range of catastrophes in both the physical climate system, such as the melting of Arctic sea ice, and the biosphere, such as the loss of the Great Barrier Reef, we are already deep into the trajectory toward collapse. That is, the intervention time we have left has, in many cases, shrunk to levels that are now shorter than the time it would take to transition to a more sustainable system. The fact that many of the features of the Earth system that are being damaged or lost constitute tipping points that could well link to form a tipping cascade raises the ultimate question. The ultimate question, have we already lost control of the system? Is collapse now inevitable? And if Will Stephan, who had been listening to this channel for the past two years, he would know the answer to that question. Will Stephan knows as well as anybody on this planet the answer to that question. Collapse is inevitable. Okay. This, you know, Stephan's view is not a unique view. Leading Stanford University biologist who were first to reveal that we are already experiencing the sixth mass extinction on Earth, <clears throat> released new research this week, meaning uh, in early June, showing that species extinctions are accelerating in an unprecedented manner, which may in itself be a tipping point for the collapse of human civilization. Also in the past week, meaning early June of this year, research emerged showing the world's major food baskets will experience more extreme droughts than previously forecast. With Southern Australia among the worst hit globally, Stefan used, used the, uh, the overused uh, cliché metaphor of the Titanic in one of his recent talks to describe how we may cross tipping points faster than the time it would take us to react to get our impact on the climate under control. Quote, if the Titanic realizes that it is in trouble and it has about five kilometers that it needs to slow and steer the ship, but it's only three kilometers away from the iceberg, it is already doomed, he said. Yes. <clears throat> Stefan, along with some of the world's most eminent climate scientists laid out our predicament in the starkest possible terms in a piece for the journal Nature at the end of last year. Oh, this is probably what I'm remembering is uh, Will Steffen's piece in the journal Nature, I believe, that I read out last year. But anyway, as I say, this bears repeating. Uh, if you missed that uh, chronicle of the collapse, Okay, but back in that piece in Nature, they found that nine of the 15 known Earth tipping elements that regulate the state of the planet had been activated, and there was now scientific support for declaring a state of planetary emergency. These tipping points can, can trigger abrupt 
carbon release back into the atmosphere, such as the release of carbon dioxide and methane caused by the irreversible thawing of the Arctic permafrost. Of course, we call that uh, the methane bomb, which is going to be the abrupt release of, you know, humongous amounts of greenhouse gases. The methane bomb. Then he has... Uh, we have all of these fancy uh, diagrams and charts and graphs. I'll put the link on here. And then from here, they link you into all of the, you know, this piece in nature and all of these other studies. Uh, okay, getting back to uh, Mr. or Dr. Stefan, quote, If damaging tipping cascades can occur, and a global tipping point cannot be ruled out, then this is an existential threat to civilization. No amount of economic cost-benefit analysis is going to help us. We need to change our approach to the climate problem. The evidence from tipping points alone suggests that we are in a state of planetary emergency, both the risk and urgency of the situation are acute. And of course, this was in January, a few weeks before the C word uh, hit the scene and the whole concept of what constitutes a planetary emergency uh, got forever lost when we completely lost track of the definition of a planetary emergency. Stefan, man, they're, they're really going back in this guy's career. Stefan is also the lead author of the heavily cited 2018 paper titled Trajectories of the Earth System in the Anthropocene, where you know, close to three years ago, he found that, quote, even if the Paris Accord target of a one and a half to two degree C rise in temperature is met, we cannot exclude the risk that a cascade of feedbacks could push the Earth system irreversibly onto a hothouse Earth pathway. That was the famous hothouse earth paper that you heard so much about here and elsewhere in the doomosphere. Uh, Stefan is a global authority on the subject of tipping points which are prone to sudden shifts if they get pushed hard enough by a changing climate and could take the trajectory of the system out of human control, further warming would become self-sustaining due to system feedbacks and their mutual interaction. Stefan describes this like a row of dominoes, and his concern is that we are already at the point of no return. Knocking over the first couple of dominoes, which could lead to a cascade knocking over the whole row. Quote, some of these we think are vulnerable in the temperature range we are entering into now. If we get those starting to tip, we could get the whole row of dominoes tipping and take us to a much hotter climate even if we get our emissions down, close quote, even the notoriously conservative United Nations uh, IPCC has found that already with the 1.1 C of warming we have had so far to date, there was a moderate risk of tipping some of these and the risk increases as the temperatures increase. Stefan believes we are committed to at least 
one and a half C temperature rise given the momentum and the economic and climate system, but we still have a shot at staying under two degrees C with urgent action. Come on, uh, Will. We ain't buying it, brother. You don't believe that for a minute. Okay, let's go here from, uh, from Will Steffen to Professor Hans Joachim Schellenuber, uh, Director Emeritus and Founder of the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. I am sorry to report that Hans has already politely declined to be interviewed on Collapse Chronicles. He basically told me anything I have to say is already out there in the literature. So, we're going to go find the literature. Okay. Nope. Shellen Huber uh, believes if we go much above 2 degrees C, we will quickly get to 4 degrees C anyway because of the tipping points and feedbacks. You, you know, that'll kick in at 2 degrees C, which would spell the end of human civilization. Yes, uh, there is a very big risk that we will just end our civilization. Yep. Now, that was a quote uh, from, uh, from Sheldon Huber. Oh, I'm sorry, I had him mixed up with Johan Rockström. It's Johan Rockström who uh, politely declined to be interviewed, not Mr. Sheldon Huber. Okay, now let's hear, uh, what, how does uh, that compare with Johan Rockström uh, head of one of Europe's leading research institutes warned in 2019 that a 4C warmer world, in a 4C warmer world, it would be, quote, difficult to see how we could accommodate a billion people or even half of that. There will be a rich minority of people who survive with modern lifestyles, no doubt, but it will be a turbulent, conflict-ridden world. So back from back to uh, Dr. Schellenhuber. Uh, Schellenhuber, one of the world's leading authorities on climate change, said that if we continue down our present path, quote, there is a very big risk that we will just end our civilization. The human species will survive somehow, but we will destroy almost everything we have built up over the last 2,000 years, close quote. Uh, Shellen, Bert, Shellen Huber said, uh, in a recent interview that the IPCC report stating we could stay below one and a half degrees C of warming was, quote, slightly dishonest. Yes, because it relies on immense negative emissions, otherwise known as pulling CO2 out of the air, which was not viable at global scale. He said one and a half C was no longer achievable, but it is still possible to stay under two degrees C with massive changes to society. Yes, for sure. If we don't bend the emissions curve down substantially before 2030, then keeping temperatures under two C becomes un avoidable. The Carbon Law, published in the journal Science in 2017, found that to hold warming below 2C, emissions would need to be cut in half between now and 2030. Um, Stefan told Voice of Action that the three main challenges to humanity, climate change, 
the degradation of the biosphere and the growing inequalities between and among countries were, quote, just different facets of the same fundamental problem, meaning different facets of humans. Humans are the fundamental problem, is what he's saying. Anyway, uh, this problem, according to Stefan, uh, was the neoliberal economic system, you know, the one developed by humans, uh, that spread across the world through globalization, underpinning high production, high consumption lifestyles, and a, quote, religion built not around eternal life, but around eternal growth. Quote, it is becoming abundantly clear that, one, the system is incompatible with a well-functioning Earth system at the planetary level. Two, this system is eroding human and societal well-being, even in the wealthiest countries. And number three, collapse is the most likely outcome of the present trajectory of the current system as prophetically modeled in 1972 in the limits to growth. Uh, good Lord, guys. Uh, this goes on and on and on, uh, but I really have to... Uh, Good Lord, I have to wrap this up, but I highly advise uh, you to read this excellent uh, Chronicle of the Collapse. Good Lord, this goes on and on and on and on. Uh, let's get, will we ever get to the bottom of this? Uh, I do not believe this. This is unbelievable. Uh, but we're going to, uh, let's just end, I don't know, I don't know where uh, the bottom of this uh, pit of despair is. There's probably some hopium, uh, you know, somewhere. I'm sure they had to find some hopium, but uh, I like this one here. We're going to end with the chapterette of this novel of collapse called We're Possibly Gone Already. And we're going to check in with Associate Professor Anitra Nelson uh, from the University of Melbourne Sustainable Society Institute advocates for degrowth policies which would reduce global consumption and production to sustainable levels. She says we are currently consuming resources as if there were four Earths, and if we don't change fast, we will face conditions that we cannot survive under. And we're going to close with a quote from Doomer Chick Anitra Nelson. Quote, On the current trajectory, we are probably gone already. <laughs> there you go. We are probably, I'm sorry, we're possibly, uh, on the current trajectory, we are possibly gone already. Bye-bye. And if we're not, you know, gone already, unless we act very quickly and in very serious ways, we just cannot get back into a kind of balance with nature. I do actually think we are already into the collapse, and it is just likely to get worse and more quickly worse as we go. As we go bye-bye, because we're gone already, guys. And speaking of being gone already, uh, 
I need to wrap up this excellent, excellent chronicle of the collapse. And I, uh, th this was, what, what I just read, guys, was about one-third of this uh, from resilience.org. There must be links to 25 or other 30, or 25 or 30 other uh, essays and uh, scientific journals and whatnot. So uh, do yourself a favor and read this if you're not depressed enough already. And if you enjoyed uh, what William Stephan and others had to share with you, please thumb up this video. If you would like to uh, sign up here and join, subscribe to Collapse Chronicles. We'd love to have you down here in the doom and gloom. And anyone who has ever supported what I do here on YouTube, I greatly appreciate it. But with that, I need to uh, get ready for our little mini Doomer meetup. I think I need to go make a pitcher of margaritas to uh, welcome in the collapse of global industrial civilization before we're already gone. Bye, guys. All right, little dog, are you already gone? All right. Let's get ready. Let's get ready for a little party.